lovely. <laughs> you got a booger right there. Ah! No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. <laughs> Well, episode. This is episode twenty-two. Oh my god! Of podcast on. Where this has is our, the time gone? <laughs> this Seriously. is our monthly podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, time goes really quickly. Yeah, so let's tell everybody what we're doing and who we are. Okay. Okay. You go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Barb, this and I'm is Cynthia. My sister Cynthia. <laughs> We have a little uh, yarn shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and we like to uh, chat with everybody about our yarn shop, Mm -hmm. kind of what's going on and what we're doing and um, what's new at the store, Mm -hmm, what we're working on, Mm -hmm. some of the things that the events that we have. So that's what this podcast is about. And if you're joining us for the first time, thank you. Thanks, you know, for watching us. And if you're back... Uh, thanks for coming back. Yes. That's really great. Yes. And we encourage everybody you, when you're watching, if you, you know, if you feel inspired, even if you don't, leave a comment yeah. in the in the in the comments area underneath the podcast mm-hmm. and tell us where you're from and how you came across our podcast. Um, it's really nice to get to know people, uh, especially from well, from everywhere. And I don't mean especially from far away, but you know, it's really nice to know how many people watch the show and mm-hmm. and uh and say hi in the comments. Yeah. Yeah, and let us good. know if there's anything that you'd like to see. Mm-hmm. We're, we're pretty responsive. We can kind of do that. So, <laughs> yeah. And we should also note that the name of our yarn shop is River City Yarns. Mm-hmm. And we're in Edmonton, Alberta. Canada. Canada, yeah. yeah. And today we're filming from the very front of our store. Mm-hmm. We've, um, <laughs> we've just come back from a really, a lot of events that we'll tell you about this mm-hmm. month. But one of them was our Knit for Fun retreat. Yes. And we returned with over 50 colors of a yarn called Lasco. Lasco. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's sitting right behind us. And um, it's just such a beautiful um, triangle of color of yarn and samples. And so we thought we'd plunk ourselves right in front of that. Great. Why not? Right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, so do you want to chat about what we've been up to? Yeah. Last well, let's month? first on our agenda. I think I think you're just sitting a little bit further back than me. And uh, is that bothering and you? I can't. I can't turn my can't turn my head that way. So okay. All right. I'm just gonna get a no. Your your height is great. Okay. I just want to. I'm just gonna scoot back a bit. There we go. We can so move I, the table over too. I think it's good. I think this is good. So I, I, uh, I should just explain. I, mm. I have a, I have an injury in my back, and it's affecting my shoulder. So when I turn this way, it's a little bit. That's gonna harder. hurt you. Well, I'll just, I'll just angle in here like here, this. Let me it's come all up good. A little bit it's more. all good. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, what so, have we been up to? All We've kinds been of things. Busy, busy, a, busy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It kind of started in early October, right? right? Well, our last in our last podcast, mm-hmm. we told everybody about going to the Knit for Fun retreat in Vancouver, mm-hmm. and uh, that was that was a lot of fun. It was, it was yeah. really busy. And then, what about two weeks later, after we got back from Vancouver, mm-hmm. um, we were full into the Ann Bud's Knit for Fun retreat, right? And we we've been partnering with Ann Bud. This is the second time that we've had a Knit for Fun retreat here in and Edmonton. the third time that we've brought Ann. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And but there's so, so much there was so much work involved, right? Like we is. were preparing for I think we would we were having meetings like every month with yeah. Anne just to prepare. Yeah. And then during the last week or two, she actually came in about a week early. Mm-hmm. And, yes. And um, so we've just been going uh, steady with her. Yeah, going gangbusters. And remember, between that, those two events, we also launched our Advent box. Mail yes. Out. <laughs> we started mailing out the Advent box, which meant that we had to get all the Advent boxes uh, prepped and packed and yeah. sealed and checked our list and checked it twice. And yeah, yeah started sending them out to the U.S. first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We wanted to try and mail out before... Um, you know, it got too late because we wanted to make sure everyone had them in their hands by December the 1st. And so we thought if we mail out the last week of October, we should be okay. Yeah. And then uh, the Canada, our Canada Postal Service <laughs> announced <laughs> that they were going to go on strike. Or well, rotating strikes. Mm-hmm. But even so, that's really slowed things down. Yeah, yeah. that was mid-October. Mm-hmm. So if any of you 
have an Advent box or purchased an Advent box and you haven't got it yet, mm. please phone us. Call Barb. Yeah. <laughs> call me. <laughs> email me. Call me. Email we'll... email info at rivercityyarns.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we did. We mailed the ones that were farthest away first and then uh, we went out, worked on Eastern Canada and Central Canada. Right. And so we pretty much got all of those shipped out. Yeah. And now we're working on local folks. Mm -hmm. People are coming in to pick up their Advent box in the store. Yeah. And if you haven't got an Advent box, Barb, is there there still a few that might... We still... We do have a few. You know, unbeknownst to me, Cynthia held some back. (laughs) I thought we put them all out. And then I found out, oh, no, we have a little (laughs) secret stash. This is my my cushion, right? Because I get really anxious about, about... limited edition things right and so when we put them on our online store i did hold back a few yeah. just in case you know maybe there was you know maybe somebody's order didn't make it in maybe you maybe know, we sent one to the wrong place <laughs> <laughs> i needed to resend one yeah you know so there was a little cushion there yeah so if anybody you know is still looking to get an advent box we're working on the cushion yeah. Yeah, so yeah. if you want one, yeah. Yeah, give us a show. You can you can get one by ordering it online. So if you go to our website, which is www.rivercityyarns.com, click on the shop online button and under um, I think we have it under what's new. Uh, if you click on that one, there's a, a little section specifically for the Advent mm-hmm. box. This is something that we do every year. And if you're not familiar with it, just very quickly, um, it's a it's a beautiful box. And maybe we'll show a picture of the sure. box itself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a beautiful little red box. Little. It's a big red box, mm-hmm. and it's they keep getting heavier and heavier <laughs> yes. every year. And it's filled with 24 individually wrapped packages you guys it's so much fun yeah. every day starting december 1st you get to unwrap a little box or a little package or a little um trinket of some kind yeah so the the packages contain they, they could contain um a, a notion a nifty notion mm-hmm. they could contain a uh, delectable sweet treat <laughs> yeah. treat it could be um a little project mm-hmm. um it could be yarn mm-hmm or other things. Yep, and um, and so and and each package is marked with the day that you mm-hmm. you're supposed to open it. And this year we've gone a little extra in that we created some videos to go along with it. So on the day that you might open, for example, you might open a little project. Um, mm-hmm. Then there is an accompanying video that you can watch if you prefer to kind of get some assistance. Uh, through watching rather than reading, mm-hmm. um, we've got that set up for you as well. And we'll we, publish those videos on the day that you're supposed to be opening the package. Right. So there's no spoiler alerts if you're uh, creeping ahead on the schedule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, we've done this for three years now. And this year, um, in particular, we started working on it last year. So we had a lot of time to really think about what we put into the boxes. Right. And so... Cynthia, I have to thank you because you did so much work in pulling together patterns Aww. for the projects that we put in there. <laughs> thank you. That, that was really a lot sweet. of work. And and we put video links in. Mm-hmm. And so I think you guys are going to love this year's yeah. box because there's so much to do in it. You know, every few days you're going to get a new project to yeah. do. And yeah. And we have guests who contributed to it too. We do. Which yeah. is really fun. So. Yeah. We won't say anything more because I'll, yeah. you know, for sure let something out of the bag. I always do. <laughs> so that, that's been keeping us really busy. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. And then, um, and then there was KFF. Went and in the middle fun. of all that, we were working on some projects. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Tell us about what you've got this on. One. Or maybe, let me tell, let me tell everybody yeah, about use, my sweater first. Yes. And then we'll talk about yours. Okay. Because mine I had to get done before the retreat. Yes, and that's why her shoulder's hurting her. <laughs> the speed knitting. So, hey everybody, if you've been watching the last few episodes, you know that I've been working on this sweater for Bristol many months. Um, this sweater is called the Offshore V-neck. Um, and it's, I've done it in wool stock. Took me four 150 gram skeins, so wow, uh, so 600 good. grams for a sweater, and um, yeah, it's it's a nice simple cable. There's it's nothing beautiful. complicated just... about it. The back is plain, so you just have some cable sections on the front, and the cable runs up the shoulder. Uh, so it's a saddle shoulder. So the cable runs all the way up to the neckline, 
Anyway, it's That's really such comfy. That's a pretty design. Mm-hmm. I really like, so, Did Bristol see it? Yeah, I went to the airport to pick her up. Oh. And, um, and I was wearing this sweater when, when she came through the doors from Customs, and she recognized it right away. So. She did? Oh, mm-hmm. that's so yeah, neat. Yeah, yeah. So that was yeah. really fun. Yeah. Oh, well, it looks beautiful on you, too. Thank you. I really like the shoulder shaping. Right? Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that fun? very nice. It mm-hmm. almost has a bit of a set-in sleeve look to it. It's a raglan. It? I know yeah. it is, but it yeah. doesn't really look like it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true, because the raglans are way over here. Mm-hmm. Eh? Yeah. 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 Very yeah. nice. Thanks. Nice job, Bristol. Yes. <laughs> and you're wearing... And I'm wearing this um, I saw at Knit for Fun... Justina Lorkowska. Eustina. Eustina. <laughs> she said I could call her Justina. Okay. <laughs> You're special. <laughs> she had this garment as one of her samples at Knit for Fun Retreat, and it's in her book. Um, speckles. Tabula rasa speckles. We have it somewhere over here. but It's on the table. Do you want me to go grab no, it for you? No, it's okay. No? We'll show it. We'll later. show it later. Um, it's in her book, Speckles, and it's called Tray Fun. Mm-hmm. And we had, Cynthia and I had such a great time because we were in the marketplace at the Knit for Fun show, Mm -hmm. and we were with uh, Carolyn Sommerfeld from Ancient Arts, Uh, maker of Lasco, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, Ruth Gallo from Handmaiden Fleece Artist. Yes, she's one of their designers. As well as a whole host of other people, but Mm -hmm. those two were kind of our primary booth partners on either side of us. And... Um, Ruth had kits that were perfect for this project. Right. She she took some yarns and bundled them up yes. right at the event. It's um, amazing. This yarn's called Backcountry, and it's a merino from Handmaiden. And um, she had different colors, and they were all in these bundles. And so we both grabbed one and started casting on right there at the show. You and Ruth. Me and Ruth. In fact, there was a bit of a competition, I think. Well, just a little bit. <laughs> Ruth, are you done yet? <laughs> Anyways, it was a lot of fun, mm-hmm. and um, I loved it. I love kind of ponchos and capelets. That's my thing. Yeah. And so that's what I did. Right. And I just finished it, like, two nights ago. Mm-hmm. The Is it bri- still the down? The brioche. Oh. <laughs> no, it's actually dry now. Oh, good. This brioche trim gave me trouble, Justina. <laughs> Just so you know, I must have done this about ten times. But was it was it the brioche stitch or was it you? It was me, definitely <laughs> me. It was. I mean, it's standard brioche stitch, but mm-hmm. you know, it's hard to remember what side you're on because they do kind of mm. look similar, right? And so, after about the tenth try, I finally got it. <laughs> Good for you. It looks yeah. it looks really nice, and I like that fun. navy. The navy and the pink together look really nice. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, it's great. And then um, this is, you know, you're wearing it, but uh, Carson Demers actually wore it in the fashion show Did at the he? Knit for Fun retreat. He so, was fun. You know, you, a guy could get away with wearing this too. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no? I thought it's, he looked pretty good in it. I don't know, the little friend, well, okay, you tell me what you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a lot of fun. He was, yeah. He good really sport, good. too, wasn't he? Very good sport and very patient. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, because those instructors, had to, they taught all day long. Yeah. Um, and then they went to the, you know, the evening event. Um, and they so partied they, really hard. <laughs> they worked hard and they played hard. They, they really seemed to have sort mm-hmm. of like a lot of energy, yeah. right? Yeah. And both Bristol and Carson picked up some of Caroline's yarn. Oh. Uh, the last coup. So we'll yeah. see what they're going to make with that. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. Mm. All right. So anything else? What are you working yeah. on? Well, I so we want to go to Whips? Sure. Because I, I have this list of uh, finished objects. Oh, okay. And, and you're on here quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring any of these things with you? Well, these aren't items that I finished personally. These are items that mm. we had our sample okay. knitters work on. So we'll bring those in a bit. What about this bag? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did okay, you bring I'll show it? my bag. Okay. Yeah. So Barb's been having some fun with felting. I have. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have this yarn in the shop called County. Yeah. It's from Denmark, I want to say. Denmark and Estonia. Right? Okay. It's manufactured. I think it's like from Estonia, but manufactured mm-hmm. in Denmark or something like that. Anyways, it changes colors. It's 100% wool, and it's got long, long, long color repeats. Mm-hmm. And this one is called EQ. They yes. all have different letter symbols with them. 
And this one's kind of rainbow color, so it starts off in yellow and then goes to orange and red and all through the... Uh, and so I had a big ball of it, and I just started um, knitting five stitches in one color and five in another. So it's color work stranded. Mm -hmm. And then after five, seven rows, I switched colors. So it gave me this checkerboard kind of look. That's really cool. Yeah. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fun. And uh, I just knit a, a tube. The top, I felted it afterwards, and uh, the top is um, not as wide as the bottom. And I think it's because of the felting process mm -hmm. and the fact that I picked up and knitted a bottom onto this bag. So then when I felted it, this kind of kept it out at the bottom. Right, so the, the stranded color work kind of felt it a little more densely right. than the not than the bottom, which was mm -hmm. which was a single basically. Right, a single. Mm -hmm. If I was gonna do it again, I think I'd do the bottom in a double strand. Right. Yeah. Right. Don't ask me for a pattern. I don't have one. <laughs> so basically, you just knit a giant cylinder, yeah, and then you, you de decreased it at the bottom to create the the bottom. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just picked up stitches and then just did a miter, mm -hmm. in four spots, did a miter decrease. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. That it looks turned, really cool. I thought it turned out really neat. And then um, Diane from Brick Bubble made us these cool handles. So these are leather handles that we're selling in our shop. And they've got that's a nice. really neat um, little piece that gets sewn on the inside of the bag. So she's put little holes all the way through right so there's two pieces this one and then this one and I just went through with a needle and thread and sewed the handle on with this backing that's and really nice that gives it a really nice tailored look on the inside well yeah right? and it's so sturdy I can put all kinds of stuff in here mm -hmm. I have two whips in here two works in progress right. and I'm going to take this on holidays with me too oh nice yeah. and the handles are made out of leather they are mm -hmm. yeah that looks really nice. So easy to add to Super to a project. Super easy, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it when there's holes punched in things. Cause right. Because <laughs> it's so much easier. My, well, my stitching isn't particularly even. So if the holes are evenly spaced, it just makes life so much, I know. So much simpler. And you know that hers are precise because she mm -hmm. does it with lasers. So, right, yeah. yeah. That's really nice. So thanks, nice. Diane. These look great. <laughs> That's really nice, Barb. Mm -hmm. You've done a, so how long did that take you to make? You know, I have to be honest, I had this on the go like a year or two ago. Oh, so you just kind of finished and it. And I just sort of finished it off and right. finished the bottom and then felted it. Mm -hmm. This is this is the, sort of an argument for having lots of whips. Right. Right? Is so it, those other 35 <laughs> that I have are, are purposeful. <laughs> One of these days, you'll just pick them up and you'll finish something in a week. Mm -hmm. And you'll feel really productive because, you know, you finished something, it's right? It's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I try and go through, though, every six months or so and just kind of analyze what I've got right. on the go. And, and it, you know, sometimes you have this idea that you're going to make something and you get started, mm -hmm. and then you run into some sort of thing that says, no, I'm never going to work on right. that again. For it me, goes it's, in the corner. Yeah, for me, it's sleeves on sweaters. I think really? I have a closet full of vest whips. <laughs> <laughs> I just burn out on the sleeves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I'll knit a sleeve for you. Will you? you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll have, to, I'll have to go through my whips and okay. see. Yeah. I think it's a great thing to do, like to share projects with someone. Yeah? Cause, yeah, because if I was to do your sleeve for you, mm -hmm. I would really get it done. Oh. Because I know that it was important to you that you right. have this sleeve done. But wouldn't you want me to do something for you in return? No. No? Well, you're so, you're so nice. <laughs> That's really nice. I, I, I am going to go home and go through my work. Yeah, I do. I would take something and finish it off for you. Oh, that's really yeah. nice. All so right. what about you? So, uh, well, this is my this is my one and Your only whip. Um, but I do have some, I mean, this is my one and only finished object. Right. I do have some whips. Yeah, yes. let's see yes. them. Okay. So I, I wrote last time in our last podcast, I said I wanted to do some gridiron socks. Right. So I got them started. But Before your shoulder gave out. Yeah. Well, actually I started it after my shoulder gave out. Oh. So that's why I haven't gone very far. So I've got the top done. Okay. This is Montreal. This is touchdown. Oh, look at um, this color. River City Yarns touchdown. And this is, you know, it, it took me a, a good while to wind up the ball because mm -hmm. it's 150 grams. 
and uh, over 500 meters in the ball. Right. But mm-hmm. look at this, you guys. Can you see this long, long, long red piece <laughs> in this strand? This is why this yarn is so cool. Right. Right. So, so half of it's one color. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes the gridiron pattern work. Yes. So I haven't quite got to the... I, I haven't, I've just started the, the gridiron pattern, but I haven't... Right, started it yet? So can that's people as far as see that on our website? I think we have a picture yeah. up there, don't we? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, we we have the pattern on on our website. Yeah. On the and pattern, you can really see the lines going up the sock. It's really cool. Yes, and it's on Ravelry as well. And we can insert a pattern, a picture of the pattern here mm-hmm. in the video as well, so you can see what we're talking about. So that's that's one work in progress that I've got going. And stay tuned for this too, because um, Fiona Ellis, our design manager, is putting out a call. Uh, to some designers on this yarn to mm-hmm. see what they can do with this yarn to play yes. with it and come up with some new designs. So yes. oh, we're so excited. Well, I think there may be a design coming out soon from Lucy Needby because <gasps> she was working on a touchdown oh my project. God, that's right. Yeah, I forgot yeah, about Lucy's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that's that's one of my works in progress. And I have it inside this really cool bag. It yeah. was made for me by Janet. And um, we have some of these bags in the store. Now, mine is special because it's got Star Trek all over it. Um, and not everybody is a Star Trek fan. So Janet's made us some of these um, uh, Japanese tote bags. Tote bags um, Look how cute they are. For, for the store. Yeah. And the fabrics are really nice. I really like this. I have this. a pretty one too. Yeah. And she's made them a little bit bigger than some of the ones mm-hmm. that I've seen before. So that's really nice. You can fit a good project in there. Yeah. So that's one thing. And then uh, the other thing that we've been that we've been talking about is a project that we want to do in the yarn from Iztec called Plutolopi. Yes. I, I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Um, so we brought this yarn in some time ago because when we were in Chicago, Janet, from string theory Mm -hmm. had the most beautiful sweater knit in it Mm -hmm. and we admired it yes yeah and I think you wanted to knit it (laughs) you keep saying that yeah Yeah. okay well I thought she wanted to knit it so I went and bought it all (laughs) now um I am I am starting a project and I'll talk about that in a second but Amaris one of our staff members let let me borrow her sweater for the podcast because she's working on this one yes isn't this beautiful yeah and so this can you is that? Drama by Jen Steingass. It's done out of Plotolopi, mm-hmm. out of three colors, light gray, blue, and white, mm-hmm. on a four mil and a 3.75 mil needle. Yeah. And we'll we'll take a close-up picture of this later, maybe a little video of it later, so you can oh. see how the um, the fibers are there's just so much there's just so much Icelandic about this, I know. right? The fibers have a real halo to them. So um, oh, can you see we'll show this you hairiness? A, we'll show you a close up. And then Amaris was telling me yesterday too that she did a little bit of uh, modification to the color work, in that she um, used the blue and the white up here, and then she switched to the blue and the gray down here. Instead of having one main color, she switched the main color. Oh, um, partway down the yoke and I think that just makes such a beautiful effect mm-hmm. it almost looks gradient as it goes <coughs> down um, so so she's done some uh, modifications to it which I think is just so cool so when I saw it last it only had one sleeve so I know she's managed to finish oh this one's almost that's done. right she's got a she's got to put the color work okay. section on it and then wow. she's going to finish the bottom so she's really been going, yeah. going gangbusters on this one. I love this yarn. It's so rustic looking. Yes. And so that inspired me. Right. And, so um, what are you making? So I'm going to do, uh, I'm doing, I'm working on a sweater from uh, Strange Brew. <gasps> oh, yeah. you guys, this is Tin Can Knit's new book. Mm-hmm. We have several copies of this too. I know a lot of people are asking right. uh, well, us to bring it in. So we yeah. did. This is the thing. Uh, so this they came up with this book um I want to say like maybe six or eight months ago. Okay, well, the book, the actual hard copy just came out at Knit City. Okay, and people have been coming into the store asking us if we have the print copy of the book. And I've been saying, you know, no, we haven't because we didn't. Uh, But it is available online. You can buy the the book or individual Mm -hmm. patterns online. And uh, people say, yeah, but I I want a hard copy. I want a hard copy. So uh, we've got the books in now. Yeah. And I'm doing doing this one right here. It's called Cartography. 
Um, and I'm doing it in a size that will fit Rachel. So I started with a swatch. And nice. I played around with the colors, just some of the color work, trying to decide which I thought should be the main color and which should be the contrast color. And I, I decided to go with the purple. Oh, she's going to love that. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Rachel loves purple. Yeah. So that's, that's as far as I've got so far. It's hard so to... So that's the neckline? Mm-hmm. You start at the yoke and you work your way down, just like a Marissa sweater. And you can pick your... You, they give you charts that you can follow, but you can decide how you want to do the colors and how you want to... You can even change the charts if you want mm-hmm. to. It's, it, it's a really cool book in that you can plan your own color work adventure or you can follow one of their patterns in the right. book. And you can knit them any size, right? It's traditional yeah. tin can knits. Ch- yes. Tin can knits is fabulous, right? You, their sizing is from newborn up to adult 4XL. And um, they've got some special men's sizing in here too. Mm-hmm. So Plutolope comes in these cakes um, some people call them plates. Ameris is calling them plates. Right. And you know... Uh, How I, do you find it to work with? Well, I, I, I think when we first started talking about this, I said to you, I thought that we should knit it double-stranded because I thought it was going to be really weak. But because the fibers themselves are so long, mm-hmm. this, this yarn is actually um, very Quite durable. Strong. Yeah. So, um, so it's I can... Not, it's not coming apart on you? Not at all. It's not breaking at all. And even if it did, right, you could just... Yeah, Felt it back you together. can back up and, and you don't even need to, you know, you spit splice, you don't even need to spit on it. You can just felt it back together. But the, the long strands in here actually give it quite a bit of integrity. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you pull on it, it will break. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to pull too hard. But if you want to put it in your fingers and knit with it, you don't have to worry about it breaking on the needles. It really does go quite quickly Mm. so because of my arm I can only do you know about a row or two at a time and then I have to stop do you find that some of the colors like this are hairier than other colors this Uh, one just kind of looks like the lighter colors are more yeah you might be right about that or maybe just over time as you you know as you wear it and work with it the the fibers may come to the surface I, I bet you this would felt really nice in a felted bag, too. I bet it would, yeah. And I'll bet you get lots of that um, hairiness on the outside mm-hmm. of the bag, too. So we should try that as we well. We should try that. Mm-hmm. So I'm working with purple and white and gray. And for a pop of color, I've got the orange. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. So that's my, that's my color assortment. And it's very lightweight. Um, yeah. And, uh, and just so don't wind it into a ball, just pull it off the cake and knit as you go. And it's, and it's fun. If you're lucky enough to go to Iceland, mm. you can get this yarn there in, uh, is it Reykjavik? Uh, Reykjavik is the capital. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's where Plotolopi comes from, right? I, it could be. Um, I know it comes yeah. from Iceland. I'm just not exactly sure the city that yeah. it's in. But yeah. Yeah. All right, so what are you working on there? Okay, well, this is a new sock kit that we got oh, cool. in from Unique. Um, oh. Yeah, these were really cute because they had two little balls inside. So yeah. they take a, you know, 100-gram skein of sock yarn. Yeah. And they split it in two for you. Nice. So this sock yarn is um, dyed in stripes. And oh. then this and the stripes also change color. So they variegate um, slowly. They transition very slowly. So here's one. I'm now just getting into the orange and green. Right. Oh, so they've split up the balls yeah. so that you have two identical socks? Yeah, apparently. Okay. Now, you know, don't... Uh, <laughs> don't quote you on don't that? Don't quote me on that, <laughs> but that's what the sales rep told me. Nice. So, and then they end up uh, being a little sock like this. Right. That's really cool. I, it's so nice that they split them up for you. Right? Yeah. So you can do two at a time if you like doing mm-hmm. your socks like that, or mm-hmm. you can do one. I think I'm just going to knit a big tube. Oh, yeah? You're not going to do a sock? No. Oh. I think I'm just going to knit, you know, a, a big tube. And like a tube sock? Yeah, except not a sock. Oh. You know, maybe just a big tube. Just a big tube? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, What's that expression? Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> yeah. We've seen some scarves lately that are just 
done out of sock yarn, yes. and I thought it'd be fun just to do a big long striped scarf and maybe put a pom pom at the oh, end or something. It sure feels soft. Isn't it ever? Is yeah. there a nylon in this yarn? Oh, I'm sure that there is. Probably 25%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 75 extra fine superwash merino, 25 nylon. Right. So each yeah. each ball has 200 meters. Right. Each and it's 50 grams. Yeah. This is the company that plants a tree for every mm -hmm. ball of yarn that you buy. Yeah. They're part of Trees for Future. Yeah. It's, it's a program. And um, I really like the packaging. Yeah. That's, that's really nice and neat. Hey? Yeah. 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 Very so nice. they make nice little gifts at Christmas, too. If you know mm -hmm. a knitter who loves mm -hmm. to knit socks, come and pick up a yes. skein or two of this. Do you know how many colors we've got? Uh, lots. Yeah? I just bought them all. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but things come in and go mm -hmm. out so quickly here that... It's true. I felt that, you know... <laughs> and then really, is there a bad color? <laughs> no. That looks really nice. And so the stripes just come off the ball like that. Just you don't like have to that. do anything special. No. I, it's really remarkable how regular the striping is. I know. Mm -hmm. Isn't that neat? Yeah, that is really neat. Yeah. That's very they're cool. Pretty, it's pretty nice. And it's nice to knit with. Yes. It's so, a soft yarn, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, of course, nice. I had to try it out. Of course right? you did. Yeah. And then the other thing I had to try out mm -hmm. was um, a couple months ago, Jenna told me that her mom, Catherine, right. was doing pillows. And I've got this big thing with blankets mm -hmm. and pillows. And so she told me all about the lumbar pillow kit. Mm -hmm. yes. And so they have been playing with pillows, too. And they've been doing it out of their alpaca merino. Mm -hmm. And we had those pillow kits uh, in the store. last year oh. or last month in, yeah. in the store and so then she told me about woolly silk so she mm -hmm. has another yarn that has silk in it I think yeah. it's got 50% I want to say that's what these kits are hey 30% silk yes yes 70 superwash merino 30 silk and I thought oh my god a silk pillow would be so nice it'll wear so well mm -hmm. too right it's so I know really it soft so these are these are kits that um, Handmaiden has put together. Oh, isn't that nice? This is my pillow. <laughs> you were working on this before, I think. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so this she is sent me a soft. sample. Oh. And I knit it up. Yes. And then try and find a pillow form. That was the tough part. <laughs> but I did. I found. Did one. you? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. I actually nice. had one at home that I had to take my other pillow off of. <laughs> <laughs> I had to rob it to put it into this one. Right. But this one's really cool. And and this is the actual pattern that you make. And it's it's just got an edge that's um, just seamed flat like this. Right. Or you can take and you can gather all your stitches and cinch it up mm -hmm. and get an end, an end like that if you have a bolster cushion or a round cushion. So it's up to you it's which up way to you, you want to do whichever it. Whichever way you want it. You can do it like this, this or like that. So this is the, is there, are these the same? Are these both yes, woolly silk? they're both woolly silk. And here's what they look like, you yeah. guys. They come like this in a bundle, and the pattern is fits right inside the sleeve here. Mm -hmm. uh, and what Jana and her team have done is they've taken and made one of the skeins the colorways of the Wanderlust Islands. Right. That's this theme that they've been running with. And then the other three colors are complementary colors or contrasting colors. Or maybe colors that are in that skein? Right. Or, yeah. yeah. Either or, okay. you know, so that you can do some fun color work with it. Right. And the, the uh, pattern has some suggested charts on it down here. It's right. got little charts that you can use if you... Or you can do your own thing. Mm -hmm. I kind of broke loose and did some little squares like that. Yeah. Um... But it's just so much fun, and it's a great way to experiment with color. If you haven't had a chance to do much color knitting yet, right. pick up one of these kits and make a pillow. So, so you just fun. knit this in the round on a circular needle? Yeah. Oh, easy Cynthia, peasy. It eh? was so much fun to do, you yeah. know, because every you're changing colors all the time, and you don't have to worry about your ends. They're kind of tucked inside the pillow, right? right? Yeah. yeah. So these are the kits that we have, and look oh. at some of these. They're That's, just beautiful. That I I like that. Do you like that one? Yeah. This one's Trinidad and Tobago. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, really, I I've got you know brown leather couches in my house, so I could put right. anything on top of it, right? That's right. If you yeah. have a you know a couch, 
Right. Um, this one's Maui. So if you if you want to if you want to you know sort of reminisce about a vacation spot, you could pick one for that reason. Yeah. If you just like the colors, you could pick one for that reason. Right. You you really can't go wrong. Like you know, like I don't know that I would have necessarily gravitated to this color. Right. But I love the I love these solid colors. So putting those together is just brilliant. And Cynthia, um, I saw this color in a pillow that Jana had. Mm -hmm. I had to send it back to her because she needed it. But <laughs> this color, you guys, looks amazing in a pillow. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think it would, but it does. Yeah. Well it's that it's that recipe for color work, right? You need to have a, a little pop. pop of color in mm -hmm. there that you might not otherwise Pick. Yeah. I mean, it's not not necessarily your main color, but it just adds to the um, the, the the presence, the stunning mm -hmm. the the pattern makes the pattern pop out. Yeah. So oh, I think she's really done nice. a great job with these pillows. Yeah. And what a fun project, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Home decor, and it really feels soft. I know. Yeah. Now, if you feel that you know you want wool and silk next to your skin. There's also a pattern mm -hmm. that Ruth is coming out with called oh. the Diamonds Cow. Oh. She gifted it to people at Thanksgiving, oh. um, and she's gifted it to us. Oh, nice. To give with these kits, too. I think she was wearing it at the Knit for Fun retreat. Right. Yes. So we are also getting this yarn in 100-gram skeins. <laughs> are we? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah we, these, these are 50 grams and there's four of them and then we also well she left it with us right she brought <laughs> okay. it to knit for fun and we thought why should she have to ship all that yarn home <laughs> why don't we just hang on to it for a while yes so it's still here and people can buy 100 gram skeins of it and do oh, her nice. cowl with it okay all right yeah well, that's great. Yeah. 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 It really is a beautiful yarn. It I mean, the, 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 if, if it's got handmaiden or fleece artist on the label and, and you come across it, you should just buy it because it's I just know. a beautiful yarn. We're so lucky here in Canada that we have these amazing it's dye true. artists. It's very true. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's lovely. So this so is another one of your finished objects. No. Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Work in progress, finished Here's object. To you. Yeah, that's really nice. Oh, look at you, you busy little beaver, <laughs> knitting up all this stuff. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. You'll get back at it, too. You oh, will. I will. I will. You yeah. just need to rest up for a little bit. Well, the, the good news is that I finished a book. <gasps> oh, that's good. <laughs> I, I asked for a book last Christmas, and I read about a quarter of it. And then, you know, I get busy with knitting and work and everything like that. So when Was my shoulder went book? up. No, 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 it was a novel. Yeah. Oh. So when my shoulder went out, I decided I should finish that book because I couldn't knit. So there you go. Perfect. There's always something you can do, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, so everybody's been asking us about Christmas. <laughs> yes. Are you are you doing any knitting for Christmas? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got, you know, a couple pairs of mittens on the go. And <laughs> I have this grand scheme about knitting uh, slippers for everybody in yes, my family. Yes, I bought some of those slipper <laughs> so, uh, liners too, yeah. yeah. So we'll see, maybe in the next podcast I'll, I'll let you know whether I've actually started it or not. We but. found the coolest little sheepskin... Yeah. slipper liners also like also from handmaiden yeah yeah, yeah. and so we'll, yeah hopefully cynthia will have those done for next time <laughs> so we have this, one more podcast before christmas right yes yeah we yeah. do yeah so this is the advent box right yes. and i would lift it but it's really heavy yeah it is pretty heavy yeah yeah so it's packed full of good stuff Right up to the top, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is the this is the advent box that people can right. order. And the other thing that we didn't mention before is that everything that's inside the advent box is new and unique. So every year we 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 find new things to put in it. Yeah. We create and design new things. Mm -hmm. And then um, to give you kind of a taste of what what's in the advent box, we mm -hmm. take the projects from previous years and we kit them up into right. little kits that we sell online and in the store. So, so if somebody went to Instagram, they could see some of these from last year. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's just let's just show off a few okay. of these things. So this one's called the gradient die kit. Right. And inside this box, I'm gonna open it up just to okay. show you. We put the pattern on the or the instructions on the top so we know what's inside. Inside here is another pattern yeah. for the Epic Elf beanie, because after you make your gradient die, 
you might want to make the little beanie. So this is a kit that gives you a little bit of food dye. Mm -hmm. um, and Instructions uh, on how to use it. Yeah, and a ball of yarn that's already ready for dyeing. Um, and this you can do in your own home. It's safe. Yeah. Uh, safe to do in your own house, and I just I thought like from last year this Who is one of the most. Who doesn't want to knit up an elf beanie? <laughs> this is one of really? the most fun projects that was I that know. was in the box. So it's that was a lot really of good. Fun. Here, I'll wrap it up for you while you're talking sure. about the next one. Okay, so that's a that's a kit that's available, and these are the Snow Queen wristlets. So inside this box is half a you skein. You should open that up too because half, it's really pretty. Half a skein of Adam and Eve. Oops, I dropped the pattern. Um, and then when you know when you buy it, or if you were to buy it online, we pop the pattern inside. So this is um, half a skein of heaven in Adam and Eve. And, the nicest uh, yarn ever, you it's guys. Beautiful. So soft. Mm -hmm. And so you can make a pair of wristlets out of that one. And then um, we have a little package here of mini stockings. So this is um, a pattern to do tiny little like four inch stockings yes. and we've packaged that up with three different colorways of hat trick hat yeah. trick semi-solid and hat trick in kind of Christmassy colors right? yeah, yeah yeah green and red we also do silver and blue and yeah all different kinds yeah um, and we have a little mini mitten um, kit that's very similar to that one as well um, and then this is Angela or Angela however you want to however you want to pronounce that and this is a little crocheted angel ornament kit. So inside here are two little wooden angel forms. They're so cute. <laughs> and some uh, really fine crochet cotton. So you can make a minimum, like at least two angels, if not more. Yeah. Um, and then this one was really fun. This is the Jolly Juniper tree. And this was um, some eyelash yarn and some epic in a ball and the pattern to make a knitted Christmas tree mm -hmm. and you can make it with or without the eyelash yarn right and we have made these they're super easy to make they're just the knit stitch and the purl stitch but we've made them out of every color mm -hmm. and every kind of yarn you've probably got tons of scraps at home yes and make your own little you know juniper tree forest because yes. they look so cute when you have a whole bunch of them they do this one is this one's got a like a light gray and green this one here and in this package we've got green and green but we have gold and uh, brown and green and brown and mm -hmm. cream and green there's just I think bunch some of, of the nicest trees are the ones that are like white mm. and there's a red one and mm -hmm. I think you have to have a whole forest <laughs> all different colors yes but finding the eyelash yarn these days is that was tough really difficult isn't mm -hmm. it yeah I yep. called all my suppliers and they're all out mm -hmm. I got we got one bag in from one and right. one from another and so yes if you have any in your stash hang on to it because it's <laughs> it's hard to find yes so these are, these are some of the little kit projects that we have available in the mm -hmm. store and they're based on previous year's advent boxes yeah yeah but inside this box all new, new stuff mm -hmm. yeah and now and you'll be able to see it next year yeah yeah if you didn't get it this year yeah yeah and then we've got a really pretty flash mob that's, that's coming right up too yeah. right every month we do flash mob mm -hmm. and that's kind of our special yarn that we get a dyer to dye for us mm -hmm. it's exclusive it's just limited edition yeah. it's one dye when it's gone it's gone when it's gone it's gone yeah and this one is from Richard DeVries. Richard dyed this for us a while ago. Mm -hmm. And we've been hanging on to it because <laughs> he named it Solstice. Mm -hmm. And what Solstice is... It's that time of year when, when usually it's the time of year for us when, you know, sunset equals sunrise almost. Anyway, yeah, yeah it's the, it's the so December 21st. Right, so it's when the, I think solstice. the weather, the sun starts to go back to, shining more after December yes. 21st, right? Yes. So right now it's kind of dark and, you know, you drive home at night and it's pitch black. <laughs> but um, this one um, reminded us of Christmas and holidays mm -hmm. and, you know, those shiny gold balls that you put on the tree. Yes. Well, that was the inspiration photo, mm -hmm. right? It was a, like a basket full of ornaments. Yeah. 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 So this is what he designed for us. This oh. is called Solstice. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. Yeah. It's shades of gold and bright yellow and mm -hmm. grays, uh, charcoals right through to yeah. dusty grays. Yeah. 
solstice. And so we and love this. Is, this is on the Papino base. Mm-hmm. And uh, Papino is a superwash merino yarn. Um, Richard makes these, they're kind of like fat. Um, you know, like some when you when you get a fifty, it's not a fifty gram skein. Sixty five mm-hmm. uh, grams. Yeah, two hundred and twenty five yards, two hundred and six meters. Mm-hmm. Um, so a single skein actually goes pretty far. Yeah. Um, I made um, I made a skirt out of Pepino. Yes. I think I. How many did you use? I think probably seven skeins. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Seven or eight. Yeah. It was an Ann Bud skirt. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's one of your nicest, isn't it? I love it. It wears yeah. really well. It does wear really well, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've also used, I mean, we use Pepino for, um, oh, uh, Sheila from our store made a beautiful uh, Yustina Lorkowska pattern called Close to You. Mm-hmm. She used three skeins to do a shawl, yeah. and it's really pretty. Yeah, pick up, you know, a so few this skeins be, and do a shawl out of this. This would be really nice. One of those one. pieces, too, that you could wear through the whole holidays. Right. You know. And because it's variegated, you know, it picks up a lot of color. So you can wear this with black, you can wear this with gray, you can wear it with brown, you can wear it with purple. Um, yeah. There's lots of different colors that this will go with. I think that's what I'm going to do, Barb. I've been wanting to make that close to you shawl. Oh, really? That would look really nice in this. <laughs> She's going to make one of those, too. <laughs> well, maybe I'll put that, you know what, I'll buy the flash mob, and then I'll put that on my New Year's resolution list, right, mm-hmm. to get it done before March or something. There you go. Get it done before summer equinox. <laughs> or, you know, tell me that you're making a sleeve, and I'll knit it for you. <laughs> yeah, just follow this pattern. It's a sleeve, really. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so solstice is available. Uh, on on November, November 20th. 20th mm-hmm. At 6 p.m. Right. Check that out. Yeah, do that. That's great. And Richard's from Ontario. He's a Canadian dyer. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Richard DeVries. Perfect. Yeah. And then we also have a feature yarn this month. That's right. Mm-hmm. So every month we take one of our yarns that we have here in the store and we put it on promotion, a program that we call Sample It. Mm-hmm. And it's a way of um, having our customers sample a yarn that you might not have tried before and see if you like it as much as we do. Mm-hmm. This one's one of our favorite Rowan yarns. This is called Cocoon. And Cynthia, you've been designing with this yarn for years, right? Yeah. Back in uh, several years ago, you designed a mitten pattern. Yes. Can you chat with us about yeah, that? Yeah, for sure. I, I went to visit my husband's parents in New Brunswick. Yeah. In January, my husband thought we were completely mad to go to New Brunswick in January because it's cold. It's very cold there. And I had, I had a couple of balls of cocoon with me Mm -hmm. and I needed, I needed mittens because it was really cold. So I designed this pattern called snow daisy mittens. Um, and, and this is it done in a couple of different colors of cocoon. Aren't those lovely? Yeah. This yarn knits up so nicely. And how how do you like it for color work? Because you've got the color design on both sides, right? Yeah. So, I, you know, I like to keep things simple. There's no left or right hand mitten in this. You can put it on either way. That's nice. So so it doesn't matter. You can wear it, you know, one side one day and and flip them around the next. For sure. Um, And there's, there's not too much color work. So there's some color work in the cuff. And then there's no color work while you build the thumb. Because that's, that's, that's enough to concentrate on on its own. And then the daisy comes in after the thumb is completed. And it makes the, that part of the mitten super warm. Um, this is a yarn that's gauged for a 7 millimeter needle. So these mittens are knit on a 6 millimeter needle. Mm-hmm. And that helps to keep it um, nice and dense. And yeah, they're just, they're super warm Mm -hmm. and super quick to knit because you're using a chunky yarn and a bigger needle. Yeah. Um, And you can do a pair of mittens with two balls. Obviously you need two colors to go together. But if you buy three balls, you can make two pairs of mittens. Oh, bonus. You need one ball, um, you need one ball for the main color and half a ball for the design, the the contrasting color. And you're gifting this pattern to people right now, right? Yeah, we've got a limited number of patterns, but when you buy Cocoon, not only is it on sale, you get 10% off, whether you buy it on our online store or in the shop. And um, if you buy it online, we'll tuck a copy of the pattern in with it. And and if you buy it here in the store, we'll gift you a copy of the pattern uh, here in the shop. Lovely. Yeah. Show us the hat, too. Oh, yeah. 
So this hat has a cute little pom-pom on it. This one's called the Chucko hat. It was a free pattern on Ravelry. We did it on a six mil needle and then put a little pom-pom on top. Mm -hmm. But just a nice little hat where we've taken two different colors. Yeah, and there's there's Ribbing. so many colors of cocoon. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a nice little pastel version. Here's sort of like a foresty Earthy. kind of yeah. But there's there's just a an abundance of colors. And you don't have to do the snow daisy and cream. You could do right. it in any color at all, right? Mm -hmm. And you can go reverse like we did with this pair here. I love these earth tones. Yeah, they're really they're really nice. So cocoon is a great yarn. It's um got quite a bit of meterage on it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, 115 meters. Right. And in the, a 100 gram skein. Yep. And the gauge on here is 14 stitches on a 7 millimeter needle. So it fits into that chunky mm -hmm. category. And I like the fact that it's got 20% mohair in it. Mm -hmm. I just love the halo from it. Yes. So great for, great for accessories. We have a sweater made out of it as well mm -hmm. here in the store. Um, and it's you know, it, it's a heavier yarn. So if you make a sweater out of it, you're going to, it's going to keep you really warm. Yeah. Um, so maybe a cardigan would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But scarves, hats, mittens, if you like, it's a beautiful yarn. And Rowan, okay. of course, has tons of patterning for it also. Right. Yeah. Speaking of garments, we have a couple from a book, right? That right. we wanted to show you before we let you go today. Yeah. yeah. So let me, let me do that. Yeah. I'm going to put this away. Okay. And then let's put the garments here on the table. Sure. Pick up the stuff that I'm dropping. And we'll, we'll and do we'll that. And we'll be right back. Yeah. So, Barb, uh, we've got a trunk show here right. in the store. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, last month we talked a little bit about this book by hand. Right. Right? Yeah. This is a book um, that's all about, uh, in this, this series, um, the Pacific Northwest and right. Vancouver, Victoria... Uh, different places in British Columbia. Right. And um, and the book features, you know, designers and yarn folks and makers. And, yes. Right? Uh, and in that recipes area. and all kinds of things, mm -hmm. all that are, you know, kind of associated with British Columbia. Right. All, the, all things that are done by hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's an article in here about dyeing yarn and Sweet Georgia mm. and uh, how she's, you know, getting into all sorts of different... Things. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's all about the community, and then it has some great patterns in it too. So they lent us the trunk show. Oh, that's so this. nice. So I thought it would yeah. be lovely if we could just show a few of the garments. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's so nice to see them in person, mm -hmm. right? Let's so leave these ones book, for now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there's um, two pullovers, mm -hmm. a couple of shawls, and some great hat patterns. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the hats because okay. Andrea Maori designed one of these hats, right? Or, or all of these hats? Or all of these hats. <laughs> They're this called really the cute. Pender Hat. Pender Hat. That's by Andrea so Maori. How does that feel? Nice. Nice. How does it look? It looks great. <laughs> so this hat's kind of like um, little diamonds of yes. moss stitch. Oh, and yeah. the yarn is really lovely. Now this yarn is uh, from Hinterland Farms. And I've learned that Hinterland is an alpaca farmer oh, uh -huh. in BC. Yeah. And she takes her alpaca fiber and blends it with Rambouillet mm. to make uh, yarn. That's really nice. She has sends her alpaca to Custom Woolen Mills no down kidding. in southern Alberta. Here in Alberta. Here in Alberta. Mm -hmm. And they blend it with Rambouillet mm -hmm. and then turn it into yarn. And so... Wow, so it's a, a 50, 50 alpaca, 50 wool. Yeah. So uh, I'll bet these aren't even dyed then. It's just the natural alpaca Correct. colors. Yeah. Al alpacas have so many shades, hey? They do, yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. So, Isn't it beautiful? And I, I think that you can just get it from her. I know she was at Knit City. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, you know, um, farmers and dyers, they work all year long to mm -hmm. accumulate enough product to take to Knit, Knit City. And right. I think this is kind of the situation there. Right. So we don't have this yarn in our no, shop. No, we don't. No. Nope. 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 But we could always suggest an alternative as well. Absolutely. In fact, mm -hmm. we, uh, here, I'll, I'll show you this, these sweaters. There's right. two yoked sweaters oh, in this gorgeous. issue, too. Let me too. hold that out for you. This one's called the Hannah Lee Pullover. And this one, I think, was designed um, by the lady that had, that runs 
uh, hinterland, hinterland. Oh, farms. very nice. And then there's one other one. Because the, these colors look very similar to the colors in the hat. Don't they? Yeah. 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 And then here on my lap. Yeah. There's one other one. And this is called the Berard Inlet mm. Pullover. And again, I think this, is, this fiber is Hinterland Farms. And then they also did one out of uh, Sweet Georgia. Look at this. Wow. That's gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Yeah, this looks like um, this looks like it might be a merino. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, so, I think this one is sweet fiber. Oh. Yeah, this is their merino twist. Very nice. Yeah. Just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. The color's so intense. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's those. And then there was a couple of shawls. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look here. This one's oh. called the Siwash Shawl by Natalie Volyanyuk. <laughs> here you, oops. Isn't Hold that pretty? That's gorgeous. That's so big. I know. Yeah. There's a large one and then a small one in the okay. collection. They're both the same pattern. They've got cute little baubles on them in, mm -hmm. in the pattern and almost kind of like a leaf-like slip stitch design. Yeah, that's really pretty. Aren't they pretty? Yeah, I definitely see the baubles in there. Mm -hmm. That's really cute. But they're, you know, they're just small. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So there's a few garments. If you're looking for inspiration from British Columbia, check out this book, mm -hmm. By Hand, issue number seven. Yeah. We did a few of the cowls, um, Cynthia. We, yes. Wendy knit these for us. Right. These are the sweaters. Yeah. Right? That yep. we, yes. Well, I said to Andrea, I'd love to knit the sweaters, but I don't think we have enough time. And she said, well, just do the cowl. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Yes. So these are them. That's Andrea Hungerford. Yes. yes. Yeah. She's the editor of the... Yes. Yep. Yeah, by hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we did these out of Epic. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show, I mean, you, you, you can find, if you can't find the yarn, the actual yarn in the pattern, there's lots of substitutable That's yarns right. out there. Yep. Yeah, that's really nice. And, and Epic, then, Epic we use for so many things. It's like our go-to yarn for oh, all kinds of projects, yeah. right? Well, it's nice. It's Peruvian Highland wool. It just uh, knits up like a dream. Mm -hmm. It's so soft mm -hmm. and um, such a versatile yarn. It's a worsted weight, very reasonably priced, and um, comes in lovely shades. Hundred gram balls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. You don't have to wind it into a ball. It's already in a ball. Right. Mm -hmm. We bring it in from Peru, and yeah. it's. It's our kind of our basic, right? In fact, we've got a sample of it, right, uh, right behind us here. That's right. Mm -hmm. We did another BC British Columbia designer, Shannon Cook. Right. We did her Veronica sweater out of it. Yes. And it turned out so nice. We actually did two of them. <laughs> we I've did got this the other one, one in gray. You've got mm -hmm. the other one there. Yeah. Super. And then we came out with a brand new shade this fall called Bison. I'm just gonna lay it over the table here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we did another one in bison, and it's such a great design. Yes. It's kind of a shawl collar, and, you know, you can wear it two ways. Yeah, you can wear it upside down if you want to, right? right? Yeah. And we love the way that mm -hmm. it looks upside down because it has a really nice V or um, a nice U shape at the back on the bottom. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of covers uh, the hips. It looks, <laughs> we think it looks really nice. Yes, and it comes in three sizes. It's right. Size one, size two, and size three. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a range of um, inches in, in each of those mm -hmm. ones. So you, you pick the size that sort of fits the range that you want. Hey? Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is nice because then it fits a multiple of people. You don't, you know, if you can, you could share it with someone. You and I could right. share a, a Veronica. That's well, right. In fact, these samples that we have in the store often get worn by our staff during the day. Oh, for cold. sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're um, they're lovely to wear. This is one of those ones that um, is real a classic piece. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yep. And then speaking of samples, we also redid one of our um, in-house yes. designs. So Ann Bud designed a sweater for us in Epic called mm -hmm. Aiden, and then we had it re-knit in Lasco. Yes. And that's that's just behind right me behind you. over here. We'll we'll give you a close up of the of the pattern also. But this yarn, sun. you guys, you have to try because the stitch definition is amazing in yeah. it. It just makes stitches kind of pop to life. 
Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful yarn. Did you see the sample that Amaris did? She's working on Gudrun Johnson's Oh, no, I uh, haven't sweater. seen that one. Oh. And the stitch definition is amazing. Oh, that's nice. So Lasco is from Ancient Arts. Mm -hmm. We have it here in the store. And as Barb said earlier, we have over 50 colors of it. Yes. I was calling it 50 Shades of Lasco. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and it's a mix. It's a blend. That's right. And it's um, from a kind of a rare breed of sheep. Mm-hmm. So there's an, an, old, an old world mm -hmm. breed. Manx Loughton, mm -hmm. and then a New World breed, yes. Punta Arenas. Right, yeah. a Merino. F mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And kind of the best of both worlds, right? Mm -hmm. can, anyways, it's a beautiful yarn. It doesn't take the dye, the, um, the wool doesn't take the dye the same way as the Merino. So you get these nice slubs of chocolatey brown wool. Yeah. Yeah. Showing up in your yarn, it's beautiful. Yes. And Carolyn has dyed them. If you wanted to do like a gradient project, there are so many colors where it, you can you can just see like you could you could move from one shade to the next. It, right. The hue gets darker as you go along. Yes. And greens and oranges and um, beautiful blues. fall shades. Yeah, yeah. So if you did want to do a, you know, if you want to do a sweater and you didn't want to, you know, split up the colors you could mm -hmm. you could easily pick up a gradient yeah. in on all the colors that are available in it mm -hmm. yeah and she has two patterns right now too that we're gifting away that's right um one cowl is a pattern yeah a morris mosaic. code mm -hmm. and then the scarf and hat pattern right, right. Yeah, yeah yeah that's really good so we'll put links to those yeah as well in the show notes yeah well, I think that's it, Cynthia, that we have today. I think that's, it's, it's been a lot, actually. Yeah. 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 And, um, I think that's one of the nice things about coming to your, your yarn shop is that you get to see things knit up. Yes. And, and that inspiration, right? When you walk into a yarn shop and they have lots of samples out, it really makes um, your next picking your next project easier. That's so important, too, because, you know, you just sometimes can't tell what a piece is going to look like in a book or right. in a photograph, mm -hmm. but to see it and try it on. And right. so we hope one day that all of you can come to our <laughs> shop and see all of the samples mm -hmm. that we work on and we knit. We spend hours and hours on them, but it's so much fun. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll put some on here and show everybody what these samples look like, either on us or on a mannequin, sure. so you can yeah. you can get a close-up of them. All right. All right. Fashion show to come. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Now, um... Did we have any uh, prizes that we're announcing at the well, end of this podcast? Remember we had a prize that never mm. got picked up? That's right. We have two skeins of um, linen right. that, um, that, we, that never got claimed. So Almost we're going to give them away this, on this podcast. Okay. And what shall, we, what shall we give away? What shall we ask people to comment on? How about Christmas? Yeah. Why don't you tell us... Um, what you're knitting or crocheting or weaving um, for Christmas if you plan to give away anything uh, as a present at the end of the year what's your what's your project that you're mm -hmm. working on and if you don't do gifts for Christmas um, that's okay too maybe just tell us what you're working on as your winter project and um, and then we'll Very pick a idea. few people and we'll gift some yarns because mm -hmm. uh, I think we have a few tucked away in the back that we, we might like to give away. Hey? Yeah. Okay. And maybe yeah. a couple project bags, too. Ooh, that's nice. I think we yeah. have some of Mrs. Brown's project bags. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So maybe we can pick, like, six winners Ooh. or something like that. Fantastic. That's okay. our Christmas gift. Okay. All right. So comment on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you're working on and what... What, maybe maybe some memories that are associated with it or why you picked that yarn or who you're making it for. Um, tell us a little story about that, and then we'll put your name in the draw. Okay. Okay. All right. Have a great month, everybody. We'll see you in December. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the cool, crisp weather. <laughs> All right. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.